Lower House Farm with the two Roper brothers. Um, so we're here today to uh, talk about your robots. Can you tell us a bit about your farm and what you do? Uh, yeah, we, we've got about 200 acres, something like that. Um, mainly dairy, dairy farm. We also have the beef bulls that are following from the cows and uh, we grow a bit corn. Uh, but recently we put in these two Dideval robots. Um, we started up on the 13th of January. Um, so that, it was sort of a few teething problems to start with, but now they're going really well and we're pleased with how the cows are doing and the extra milk that we've had. And it's worked really well, actually. It's just, it was a tough autumn to put them in, but I think we've got over the worst of that now. We've just got to wait till it dries up, finish tidying up. And, uh, a lot of spare time. The extra milk was a big factor. That's um, still gone up 10 to 15 percent, which has been a real hard pain for the robots. But um, yeah, for a lot of free time, a lot more time to look after the cows, and more time to uh, look after the following stock as well. It's just a, it's like the more flexibility, really. Like if you want to get up half an hour early and do it, or half an hour later, it doesn't matter. Or if you want to watch the Six Nations and come out after that, you can do it. This, this, that's the best bit really, it's, yeah. it's just flexible. It's not set routines mm -hmm. and you can do whatever to suit, to suit really. You're still the same amount of time looking after the cows and I suppose we've been managing them better because the, the robot looks at detail, a lot more detail than ever we were before. So we're seeing things that we hadn't mm -hmm. seen before. Yeah, like milk quality and things like that. And then um, picking up on uh, cow activity as in bullying and stuff. It's, it's really helped with things like that. It's made it a lot easier, yeah. Did you get some food for mastitis? We ne didn't really have... I wouldn't say so, because no. we didn't have much of... We, we really never really had any before. issues. South camp was low before, so yeah. it's just stayed about the same, really, I'd say. But it is good to see... It does pick them up earlier than you would see in the parlour, but yeah. we, it hasn't, we haven't really treated any new cases from because going of the it, parlour. No. No. <coughs> yeah, when we first treat the cow, we'll then put the information on the medicine record and then you go up to the computer put it into the medicine record and you just put the cow as a dump and you dump it indefinitely. Um, so then you definitely know that it's not going to get back to the tank and it's foolproof really. And when you think you look through all the data and check that they've had uh, enough time with a withdrawal, that's when you then return back to tank. So you can't get wrong really. It's, no. it's, it's quite, as long as you remember to put it onto the computer, you're fine. Yeah. Really. How does it work once you've uh, So they'll calve, they've got a dry cow fences there, they'll calve, and then uh, the cow and calve will stay together for approximately 24 hours. And uh, we get the colostrum, the first few milks, and then <coughs> we'll separate them. And the cow will come straight into the herd and stay in the herd then, and the calf will go on with the rest of the calves feeding twice a day. Do you calve all year round in the spring? Uh, mainly autumn, autumn block ish. We sort of start in August and go through till uh, the end of March calving. But the bulk is before Christmas, the bulk of the calving is, yeah. What sort of protein is the milking herd on? dairy cake that the we fed through the robot is 18% and then we feed down the feed fences, grass silage with um, like a 30% blend and uh, like a home mix ration which is wheat, oats, uh, minerals, sometimes beans, mix all together which makes somewhere between 18-20% ration um, which we put out with a mixer wagon. Um, yeah, and they eat down the fence. Yeah. Back to the robot on average, how many times a day does it come on? Was it 2.7, I think it is? 2.7, 2.8. 2 it yeah. all depends on the busy time of the day. If it's the busy time when you look, it's more. It's just about 2.7, 2.8, something like that. Yeah. So. And what do you do with the fresh half of the small system? You do Try and kick the unit off. The first sort of few days, you have to set them as a trap cow. So when the cow goes into, when, but you have to push them into the robot the first time because they're not used to going in. And once you like entice them in with a bit of cake, they'll go in, and you have to just scratch their back so they don't kick it. And you, you set them as a trap cow on the robot. When the cow, the heifer or whatever, goes into the robot, it alerts you, comes on your phone, and you've got 10 minutes to come round. And, and start it milking, and you can just watch, make sure she's not, sure she's not kicking it. Yeah. yeah, but you can look back on the her milk. If they, she comes in and you answer her as a trap cow, you can look to see if she had kicked it off. 
to see if she's not been milked properly, so it's quite good you can look back. We uh, came out down to plowing the road to the John Deere. Yeah. So you're a John Deere fan? Yeah, yeah, we were, I'd say so, yeah. We got um, two bigger John Deere's <coughs> and a smaller John Deere on the mixed wagon and a John Deere loader as well, so definitely John Deere fans. It's reliable, really. Yeah, it's good, nice good tractors. They hold their value as well. Which, yeah, so you spend it. the money in the first place, and they, they hold, you know, when you come to sell them, they still work the same, so. Uh, yeah, local contractor does the chopping and the trailer, and but we do the mowing, the tedding, and the uh, and the pit as well. But uh, yeah.